I, I think congrats are in order. I mean, making plays, fighting through multiple injuries, man, that was an inspiring performance. How how uh, how hampered were you out there getting that job done? Yeah, it was pretty restricting, um, the hamstring. But, um, you know, I fought through, was able to make a couple plays uh, um, in a situation where my team team needed them. So uh, it was cool. I'll yeah. be all right, though. Oh, right on. You will. You'll be all right. Uh, I, I felt like watching it. I was like, man, that's a hell of a route to run on the on that touchdown you scored. I felt like you never really bursted. It, it was just smooth, and you, you you beat him with the techniques. What do you have to keep in mind when you're when you're playing and you're not a hundred percent there with your legs? Yeah, you have to. I mean, there, listen. There's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So, like, um, you know, speed isn't the only way to 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 be effective. Um, because if that's the case, then only fast wide receivers would be successful in the league and we all know there's a lot of there's a lot of receivers that have, that have come through this league who weren't the fastest but you know are, are, are hall of famers so um i always try to keep that in mind um you know all the guys who i played with who um put up even numbers that i didn't put up and i felt like i was you know a more explosive receiver um i try to take things away from their game just so that um, when I'm in a situation like I'm like I was in um, during the Panthers game, it could give me more confidence that hey, I, I maybe don't have to be as explosive that I that I know I am to be successful. So for example, like I played with um, Jordy Nelson when I was at the Raiders, um, and he, you know he can run, but he's not like a four three four four guy, you know. Um, but he had 1,500 yards uh, in the season before, you know. And so um, I keep that in mind. So when I'm hurt, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be Jordy Nelson today <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> there you go. Now, did you say skin a cat because it was against the Panthers? <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay, just wondering. So I, I see, I think for a lot of fans, it's kind of the most fun things is when we get to see mic'd up stuff and some mic'd up stuff came out of that game, including you having no idea who you had just scored on. And it was CJ Henderson, the former uh, Florida Gator, who apparently is from the same area you are. Is that normal for you to not know who you're playing against? Or is that just because he was so new to that team? Yeah. So it was, it was so, <laughs> um, no, it's not normal because I was I watched film all week. Um, Dude, who the hell is fifteen? <laughs> so I'm, like, oh. I'm like, who is who is fifteen? And then the, the the other thing was his uh his film wasn't on. Uh, that's just a whole nother story. But no, I didn't I didn't I didn't know who that was. But it's not it's not normal. I mean, I knew the name, but I didn't know when they put the number fifteen in. I didn't I had no idea it was him. Hey Amari, one of my favorite things when I worked with DallasCowboys.com was. The pictures that the social media used to get of you coming from your car into the locker room and you always had these great looking jackets and the turtleneck and all that stuff are you one of those guys that now the weather hopefully will start turning cooler do you, you have like a winter set of suits you wear or do you go for like man if it's 90 degrees i'm still going to throw this turtleneck down in this this uh, this this velvet coat this jacket that i got on today yeah, so uh, I don't like wearing suits, but if I have to wear a suit, it's going to be a turtleneck and then like a jacket over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so under Coach Garrett, we had to wear we had to wear that type of attire. Now we don't. So that's why you don't really see it anymore. OK. Uh, and then um, I'm one of the last ones that, that arrives at the stadium. Um, usually the guy who takes the pictures, he's already. <laughs> He's already done taking pictures. Well, there's a, no, there's some good ones of you, though, Amari. There's some. I mean, I I remember, like I say, with Taylor Stern, and then when they when they were doing the social stuff, and they would post those pictures of you. I'm going, man. I wish I could look like that. I wish I could wear a jacket that you know. I mean, well, Brian, you're 57. I know, but I, I understand. But but Amari, seriously, he he throws down these these looks, and I wonder. Okay, when you go out to buy a jacket, you know, what are you looking for in a jacket? You know, what do you when you 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 know you're a guy that could go get it off the rack and stuff like that. But what are you looking for in a jacket? Well, I think it's important to know what looks good on you um, and what doesn't. Like I go to I go to these places and I don't just I don't just buy anything. I just uh, I go and I try these things on, you know, sure. certain people have certain colors that look better on them based off of their complexion. Um, certain people have uh, uh, 
certain types of clothes that look better on them based off of their shape and their tone and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I just, one day I was wearing turtlenecks and I, I felt like it looked good on me, you know? Sure. Um, and so that's how I go about shopping for uh, stuff to wear. I was wondering about that turtleneck. If it's the if it's the look, that's that's a bonus. But those button up shirts, they get up on my neck, man. I feel like I'm getting choked out, and it's yeah. it's chafing my neck. You know, <laughs> that's why. That's what. That's what I'm thinking of when I see guys in a turtleneck. It's like that's the comfort play right there. Exactly. Amari Cooper here with you on the fan. Now, what is your color? Uh, blue. I wear a lot of blue. I wear a lot of red and black. Yeah, that red and black looks good, man. I'm, I was looking at a picture with the red and black coming in. I'm thinking, like, it's creepy, Brian. Well, no, I was just because I wanted to make sure. But yeah. I remember my uh -huh. you know working for dot com, and yeah. I'm like, this guy always threw down a great look. Yeah, he does. And yeah. I was like, it's like one of the better looks. So now, yeah. now, Amari, do you have a game day vehicle, or or do you rotate those? How do you play that? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I rotate them, uh, but I like to, I like to. Um, I like for it, for it to be a smooth drive to the facility. I have some couple of loud cars, man, that I don't <laughs> necessarily want to drive on game day. What are the loud ones? Uh, I got a Ferrari. That Ooh. thing's like just loud all the time. <laughs> so instead, you're driving some sort of hybrid. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I got a I got a Bentley. It has a like a cruise mode on it on it. So uh, what kind of gas mileage would you get in there? Real good gas mileage on the Bentley. Okay. <laughs> okay. Amari, okay, you know, Jeff was talking about sideline stuff and all that. If, if, if they ever asked you to be mic'd up, do you? I mean, would you want to be mic'd up during a game and go through a whole game and then kind of go back and watch yourself of all the things that happened to you during the game? Would you ever want to do that? Um, so when I was at when I first got in the league, they they asked me probably like once or twice. And I was just like, nah, I didn't think I would be interesting. Like, I don't really say much during the game. Um, and I, all the players that I used to watch mic'd up, they would always, because I used to watch it a lot, especially like in high school and stuff. They would sure. always like, you know, maybe talk trash or um, uh, just be more animated than I, I really am on the field. But, you know, looking at the sideline stuff, I mean, I, like I talk a lot on the sidelines, but I, I just don't think I'd be a, a great mic'd up person as far as the on the field stuff. So watching it, that's I guess that was one of the surprises is because it is. And as you're saying, it's like sideline stuff, not on the field talking trash to a player. But you have a lot to say and a lot of reactions and a lot of emotion. Is that a misperception about you that? man, this guy is just kind of always even keel. He's not going to show you anything because you were one of the featured reactors when big plays would happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I think if you, if you talk to anybody who knows me personally, they wouldn't. Like, it's interesting. I think uh, there are a group of people who would say I'm real quiet and there are a group of people who would say I'm, I'm nowhere near quiet. And if those two <laughs> people talk to each other, they'd be... <laughs> Very confused with each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, like humans are, I think, chameleons and that we can kind of fit in in any scenario. What is what do you think is like the true the truest version of you? Is it more introverted, more extroverted? Well, I think those personality types, they, you know, they exist on a spectrum. Um, I, I am introverted and I am uh, I, I can be extroverted. So um, I would say just from knowing me. Um, I'm, I'm very introverted at, at first. If I get into an environment where I don't know a, like anybody there, I'm, I'm not going to be extroverted. Uh, I can be now, especially now, just because I'm older, you know. I'm not as shy as I used to be, but um, usually I'll, I'll be quiet. It's Amari Cooper here with you, brought to you by Ford, built for Texas, built for you. Okay, Amari, um, what, are, what are you receivers thinking about all this running that, that Zeke and Tony are, are doing? The, the targets are down a little bit there since the Tampa game. Is that all right? Yeah, of course. I mean, you got to think. We lost the Tampa game. We won the, <laughs> we won the <laughs> yeah, next game. So. Yeah. Speaking of watching yourself, do you go back and, and watch the, the television copy and listen to the commentators ever? Uh, no, I, I actually don't. Um, I don't, but a lot of players do. But, you know, just watching film is enough for me. And then I know what I did. <laughs> I know what I did and didn't do on the field. Yeah. So I don't. I don't. Well, I mean, uh, 
I guess the reason I asked is last week they were talking about, and a couple of different times they brought up how you've produced more at home recently. And I was wondering if you think that's like a, a non-story or is there something to it? And, and, and from your perspective, why maybe that's that's happened over the last couple of years? Uh, it's, an, it's a non-story. I'll tell you why. The, okay. um, the first game of the season, I had 16 targets, 13 catches, two touchdowns, 130-something yards. Last game, which was a home game, I had three targets. <laughs> and it's, there's only so much you can even do with three targets. So my point is, if you look at the numbers, um, the trend is I've just been getting way more targets at home than away. But as I just explained, there's been a, there was a scenario this year where I got you know a whole bunch of targets on an away game. Yeah. So it's just all about the targets. I just think it's a it's not it's a I think it's a non-story, but it's a it's definitely a, a just a one of those coincidence type type deals to where hey home games and getting a lot of targets and then away games I just I'm just not getting as many. So what you're saying is that on the road you need to either start rooming with Kellen or Dak. <laughs> <laughs> what kind Man. of game plan? <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, Amari, I'll tell you this, though. I, I, I thought we were going to have a word with Kellen about that block and stuff. I'm watching you out there, man. You're throwing it around again. You know, I, 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 need, I, need, you, I need you catching that ball. I, you know, Zach Martin and those guys, let them block. You know, I, I, I don't need you to be like the key point of attack guy out there. You keep, <laughs> nah, you keep nah. doing that, man. They're, one thing I keep about having the run to give game, you a helmet sticker every time you do that. One thing about the run game, like when the receivers are blocking, it's going to be way more successful than when Absolutely. the receivers are. Yep, you're right about that. <laughs> So Connor McGovern is getting to play fullback, and it cracks me up. And it doesn't just crack me up. He's been really good at it. You guys have good results when he's in at fullback. If they gave you the opportunity, do you have any interest in lining up at a different position? Does it sound fun, or does it sound terrible? A different offensive position or any position? Any position. Like if they were just like, hey, look, McGovern's playing fullback. It's working out. Amari, tell us what you can do. Man, put me on. Put me. Man. <laughs> Could you lock somebody up? I mean, that's what I was thinking. He was thinking. <laughs> I could, but we got guys doing. We got guys doing that already. So <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna just play my role. <laughs> I love it. I love the confidence. I could. <laughs> Covered in the NFL is is not easy. You've talked about that, Amari. Final question for me. I, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, Urban Myers in some hot water down there in Jacksonville. What would you think if a head coach didn't get on the plane and, and fly home with you guys after a, a tough game or a, a loss? Is that a big old violation to you? I wouldn't know. I don't really, you know, speak on situations that I've I've never been a part of. Um, I've never had that happen, so I wouldn't know what to expect or right what on. to think about it. Well, congrats again on your success getting back in the end zone, and, uh, and, and best of luck against the Giants. Give them hell. We'll be pulling for you. Thank you. Appreciate it.